You're not feeling. I'm not feeling local. like people know. Yeah. You know oh God, the ones you want to be. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good. We you haven't done that one, have you? No. Let me stress this. That's a good one. Okay, got the nerves over with. Yeah, but I'm just trying, I'm just trying to see your, your whole score bad here. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. Well, I haven't even watched it. far away. They must have had it spotted. That's yeah, that's it. That, that, that's uh, as they work away. Hurricane warning, warning Hurricane Charlie. There it is. You heard it here several hours ago. This storm is expected to move right through the heart of downtown Orlando around sunset tonight. So you need to go ahead and get off the roads if possible. That's go ahead and get into your safe room if you have it. It's the interior part of your house. I think the strongest winds will be coming out of the south for at least the next five to six hours. So you want to try to avoid being in a room that has a south-facing window or wall. Try to get in as, as in interior part of your house as you possibly can. Here is the storm, folks. This is a monster. This area has grown tremendously in Florida this morning. Right now, we've got about 10 miles, Jeff, southwest of Cactiva. And we've been on this track since early today, and its initial motion is now still north-northeast at about 18 miles per hour. We'll make landfall south of Sarasota, we think, in about another hour and 15 minutes or so, right around 4 o'clock today, and work itself right up and just to the east of the I-4 corridor. So we've got a lot going on back here. We're going to get everybody regrouped for just a moment. Let's go back to the desk, and we'll be right back. Well, actually, let's go to Joe Smith right now. He has some of the newest information right now just in. Yeah. 
Ooh. We got to get back on as soon as he's done. When you go back as soon as he's done, we got the Doppler radar. We got to ride over a pop. Yeah, we won't, we won't lose him. I'm going to speed up the radar. We got to speed up the Tornado up by a pop. Yeah. We've actually switched radar sources right now. We're using our live River 1 Doppler 9000 to show you this tornadic thunderstorm that is right along Plymouth Sorrento Road on the west side of Apopka right now. Uh, this, these colors, bear with us, are a little uh, odd looking because uh, we're having to use the actual Doppler mode, which perhaps you're not used to looking at most of you are. Right here where we have this red contrasting to paint, this is uh, uh, where the radar is not actually able to measure. The wind speed is probably too strong, but right in through this area, up uh, Plymouth Central Road to the Zellwood area, just west of Kelly Park, right around Rock Springs, uh, right around County Highway 448. Kathy Bell is just live in the pop. Yeah, Kathy, what do you have for me? It's shelter at this time. That is Lee Road, and it's a mess, all right? I hope you've been watching throughout the day. We've been telling you all since this morning, the storm is coming to Orlando. It is not going to be out to the west. Uh, the National Hurricane Center has come around to our thinking on this now, and it looks like the heart of Central Florida will feel the brunt of this storm around 8 p.m. tonight, between 8 and about 10 p.m. tonight. You see how slow traffic is right now. Let's go to the early warning Doppler 9000 uh, so I can draw it. Actually, let's leave right where it is. I want to show you this entire core. Look at the lightning strikes coming from this too. Of course, tornadoes are a possibility, lightning is certainly a possibility. But this storm is kind of arching its way just to the north of, of Castleberry, and it kind of has little hills and valleys right through here. Go ahead and turn lightning off a little bit. Just north of Disney, right in this complex on the northern, say the panhandle of Orange County, if you will, it's right around the top is we're watching this tornadic thunderstorm, so Sorrento, uh, basically west of I-4, that's where that tornadic storm appears to be going right now. Zoom in a little for me, Justin, right there around the Apopka area. We've been using our early warning Doppler 9000 to actually show the winds inside this storm uh, right around Apopka and into Zellwood, and you can see that storm go right through there. It's the nature of these type of storms. Oh, boy, look at that, right there. That's what it looks like, folks. You want to know what a tornado looks like on Doppler? That's it. Right around Apopka, on the west side of Apopka, Kathy Belich was in the vicinity, obviously had to shut down because of lightning and uh, problems associated with that, but that is what it looks like, right on the west side of Apopka, heading up through Zellwood, Tangerine, some smaller communities up 441. That storm will work its way north of Orange County in the southern parts of uh, northern Lake County, and boy, that is right there. That's 441 that you're uh, pointing to right there, and uh, that storm is working to the north. It's probably just... Right, right along and just north of the 429. Well, I hope Kathy's all right. We'll check on her. But that storm is working just due north at about 45 miles an hour. Zoom out, Justin. Let's do a storm track on that. And show folks up in Lake County that you are in the path of this storm as it's moving north at about 45 to 48 miles per hour. Get settled down there right through Sorrento, uh, just close to 3 o'clock. All right, so it's going to cross over in the next few minutes. Go ahead and move that storm track up about five miles, Justin. I think that's your tornado precaution. Eustis, up around Sorrento, Mount Plymouth, uh, Johnson's Point. Lots of small communities, but lots of folks up in Lake County that are monitoring, along with us, the path of this uh, tornadic storm. All right, let's get back to the central core of view. Let's check on everybody else here. As we've been talking about uh, the Apopka area, that entire squall right now. We have Lake County under a tornado warning at this time, and also Polk County. And those storms to the south, oh, that's Osceola Park, just north of the Florida Turnpike and south of V-Line. That's where we're watching uh, that storm center right there. Charlie, by the way, is a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, the eye is five miles now off of Captiva Island and will make landfall here in a very, very short, probably just north of Captiva. But you can see the center of this storm is working. This is one of the circles. Justin, can you see that? Let's see it right in there. Now, right in the middle of the storm. Right there. Uh, it Look at that guy driving around. 
See here once again is that storm hey, surge. Take a look. We're talking about if it is 10 to 16 hey, feet, this first floor could be covered here. Studio, so we were told by management, as they told yep. people, anybody on the second floor, if they're here, they may not be able to get out. And once again, they evacuated everybody, but we're still here. Actually, one of our crew members, the management here, gave them a key and said, I'm out of here. But we can stay, and we're trying to give you the coverage of this hurricane as it comes through. We'll keep you up to date. We're live in Punta Gorda on Charlotte Harbor, Dane Meester, Channel 9, Iowa State. Or State Road 44 and County Road 415 in Pine Ridge, Iowa. County Road 415. Try to get as many of these in as you can, but if you're home, you know where you are. North of Cassia, up through, go ahead and take that out. Alexander Springs is up here to the north. We're in northern parts of Lake County. Uh, you folks in Apopka can stand down at least for the moment with this tornado, uh, but do not get out of your house, all right? Go ahead and stay inside. Stay protected because this is one of many bands of storms that we're going to be dealing with over the next few hours. You might even see a little sunshine here and there in between these outer feeder bands from this storm as it continues to move to the north. Go ahead and take the storm track off for me just a minute, Eric. And let's zoom out just a little bit and show this entire storm core. Go ahead and put this into motion. We're also watching the storms on the leading edge here, uh, just north of Cassavary, a very heavy, fast-moving squall. Probably get a good three-quarters of an inch along this as it moves through the very land, Aster. And again, it looks like this side of the storm has had a propensity to to develop these uh, small twisters. We're going to watch out anywhere from this corridor over the next several hours uh, for additional storms. Now, we're shooting from a long way out there, but it looks like we could also have uh, uh, some activity right around the land. Let's zoom in up around the land if we could. Uh, this is the actual velocity mode of our Doppler radar. Kind of gives us a look inside the winds of the storm. That was interesting over by Paisley just a moment ago. You can see that little spot right there. Could be a small one right there. These are normally very small in nature, but they can certainly do damage. This is the block, boy, this is, this is breaking right here by Paisley, just north of Cassia. That's what it looks like right here, potential tornado. We're probably looking at the mid-levels, uh, Justin, so we're probably looking at, looking at 50 knot winds right around in the mid-level. So that's probably a twister, or at least potential one, south of Paisley as it moves to the north. And again, right along, anywhere along, anywhere along the leading edge of this, we are gonna be seeing some spin-ups, okay? short-lived in nature, but they can bring damage as they come through. This is before we even get into the, the heart of this storm. Also expect a little bit of small hail. These are probably very tropical in nature, though. Uh, probably not producing a whole lot of hail as is normal for these type of storms. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to show you the wider vantage point here. This is the early warning nine tornado tracker. 
and you see we are filling up the screen with these old halos. As you know by now from watching this, we've had this tornado tracker for several years. When you see that, that is a tornado all around the eye wall of this storm as it is just to the, uh, just offshore of Fort Myers. This storm is going to work right up, we think, into the Captiva area very soon. Jeff, do you have a latest estimate for me? All within the hour. Uh, within the hour, moving onshore just to the north of Fort Myers. Jeff, I'm switching over to you right now. Okay. We have some new equipment into uh, the early warning severe weather center nine just to track this storm. Look at that eye wall just off Captiva. Here's Boca Grande. And as you work off of Captiva Island, right through there, the storm is going to probably go right along the coast and then start to hook inland as it works on through. Uh, the latest report out of Fort Myers, uh, heavy rain southeast at 43 degrees. We have 